Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow, is one of the most popular commanders of all time, currently at the time of this recording, ranking as the number 4 most popular commander over the past 2 years over on EDH Rec, and with good reason. There are a lot of different things going on with this commander. It's easily the best option available as a ninja tribal commander, and ninjas are a fairly popular tribe because their signature mechanic, ninjutsu, is incredibly well designed and allows for some really fun and interesting deck building and gameplay. Then there's the triggered ability, where whenever a ninja connects, you essentially draw a card and burn the table equal to the mana value of that card, which incentivizes you to build around having a lot of cards with a high mana value, as well as being able to manipulate the top of your deck. This is a really fun and interesting ability to build around and there are a lot of different ways that you can quote unquote cheat with it, but we'll go more in detail with that later in the video. And note that there aren't really any restrictions on how many times this ability can trigger per turn, which means that you get one trigger per ninja that connects each turn, which can get out of hand really quickly. In fact, I'd say that depending on the power level you're playing at, simply burning your opponents out with this ability is going to be super solid as a primary win condition. You can of course also just play some generic combos like Demonic Consultation and Thassa's Oracle, that's your thing. And another popular win condition is just playing a lot of extra turns turn spells, which also makes sense as they happen to have high mana values. This is probably just not the best option though if you want to also make friends while playing commander. Yuriko is also one of the few commanders that actually get to mostly ignore the otherwise really important safety measure of the format, which is of course the commander tax. The commander tax only applies to the casting cost of your commander, and since ninjutsu technically isn't a casting cost but an activated ability, the commander tax isn't applied to the ninjutsu cost. And on top of that, putting Yuriko in play using the ninjutsu ability won't even add any commander tax since you're not casting your commander. So as long as you have ways of enabling ninjutsu, you get to play an extremely mana efficient game while also accumulating a lot of value as well as putting a lot of pressure on your opponent's life totals in the process, which all adds up to a pretty scary cocktail. Before we talk about how to approach building a deck around Yuriko, I quickly want to mention that I'm mostly gonna avoid talking about cards that are just generally strong in EDH, cards like Demonic Tutor and Ristic Studies. You should probably be playing these cards in your deck from a purely competitive perspective but I'm going to focus on cards that are strong specifically in a Yuriko deck. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the cards we're gonna talk about are also generally strong in EDH, but for a variety of reasons, they get a few extra points in this specific context. Now, let's get started. Being able to consistently ninjutsu Yuriko in play, preferably as early as turn 2, is of course essential for any functioning Yuriko deck. Therefore, I recommend including a certain amount of cheap and evasive creatures in your deck, as ninjutsu only works with attackers that are unblocked. Cards like Changeling Outcast and Hope of Giripper pretty much guarantee a turn to Yuriko, as well as provide additional utility such as Tribal Synergy and a Soft Silence effect. There are a lot of options available when it comes to one mana creatures with either flying or unblockable, so try to prioritize creatures that provide that little bit of extra utility. Another great example of this is a card Fairy Seer. Not only is it a cheap flyer, it also has an enter the battlefield effect, which is very synergistic with the ninjutsu mechanic, as you'll get the creature back in your hand, allowing you to get more value out of this triggered ability as you get to play it again later in the game. Frying is also a great ability that synergizes with your Riku's other ability as it lets you manipulate the top of your deck. Baleful Strix and Orcish Bowmasters are some other great examples of strong utility creatures you're happy to ninjutsu off of. Baleful Strix is particularly sweet as it's also a flyer that even if your opponent has the option to block it, they're typically not going to be happy about doing so because of the death touch. I also want to mention the free artifact creatures Ornithopter, Memnite and Phyrexian Walker. These are also solid options as ninjutsu enablers since they cost zero mana. You can use them to ninjutsu off of and then replay them right away, which is a very efficient way of setting up for future ninjutsu shenanigans. Ornithopter is of course the best of these as it has flying. And since Yuriko's triggered ability isn't restricted to just one trigger per turn as mentioned, we're heavily incentivized to jam a bunch of other ninjas in the deck, most of which also have ninjutsu. The ninja tribe mostly revolves around two things, both of which are featured on our commander. 
The first being the ninjutsu mechanic and the second being abilities that trigger when your ninjas deal combat damage to your opponents. Ninja of the Deep Hours and Ingenious Infiltrator are very similar to each other and they're some of the most iconic ninjas in the game. Just like Yuriko, these can both come into play at a discount with a ninjutsu and although they don't let us deal massive chunks of damage when connecting, they do generate a lot of card advantage. Fallen Shinobi and Nashi Moon Sage Saiyan work in a similar fashion but rather than drawing your cards they let you play your opponent's cards and without even spending any mana. Ink Eyes Servant of Oni lets you reanimate something from the graveyard of the opponent it hits. Silent Blade Oni lets you cast a spell of your choice from your opponent's hand when it connects. Igure the Seal Wind lets you tutor any ninja in your deck to your hand as well as having an activated ability that makes a ninja unblockable for 2 generic mana, which is a very useful way of enabling future ninjutsu activations. Takashima Student is a really cheap clone which goes well alongside creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects and it even gets to keep ninja as a creature type. All these ninjas have one thing in common. The cost of activating their ninjutsu abilities is cheaper than simply casting them from your hand. This by itself is actually rather synergistic with Yuriko's triggered ability since they all count as having a higher mana value than you're ideally gonna pay for playing them. We'll go more in depth about the different ways of building your deck around that ability in a few moments. While it's typically the case that the best ninjas are the ones that you get to ninjutsu in play at a discount, there are a few exceptions. Thousand Faced Shadow is significantly cheaper to simply cast compared to the cost of activating its ninjutsu ability, but it's arguably one of the best ninjas available for the deck. It's cheap, it's evasive, it has a potentially really powerful enter the battlefield effect and is of course a ninja. It checks all the boxes making it both an excellent one drop and a late game top deck. There are needless to say a lot more ninjas that could be mentioned in this video, but for the sake of video length I'll leave an EDH rec link in the description where you can find a lot more inspiration for your deck building. Before we move on to talking top deck manipulation, remember that depending on how much you want to go in the direction of ninja tribal, there are a bunch of options available in terms of payoffs apart from Yuriko and the other few ninjas already mentioned. You probably want to consider a card like Silver Fur Master, which is both a ninja lord and gives you a ninjutsu discount. Then there are also all the payoffs that work with any tribe, such as Kindred Discovery. Although I'd argue that Yuriko has enough built-in card advantage that you don't really need to spend 5 mana for an ability like this, especially in a deck that revolves around tempo and efficiency. Herald's Horn and Vanquish's Banner also exist. Keep in mind though that when you activate a ninjutsu ability, you're not casting a spell, which means that these are probably not ideal payoffs for the ninja tribe. I just wanted to give them a quick mention for the people looking to lean really heavy into the tribal theme. Changelings are also often going to be worth considering when building tribal decks. We already mentioned Changeling Outcast being a great ninjutsu enabler, and Moth Dust Changeling is a slightly clunkier but very similar creature. The best Changeling card for the deck is probably just Black Market Connections, which is definitely one of those cards that are just generally really good in Commander. It spits out a 3-2 Changeling every turn as well as ramping, color fixing and drawing you cards. There are two key elements when it comes to building around Yuriko's triggered ability. First, we need to have a critical mass of cards that are considered good hits, which are needless to say cards with a high mana value. However, we're not necessarily interested in just playing a pile of really expensive cards in our tempo deck, but luckily there are a bunch of different ways we get to cheat, which means that we can play cards that count as having a high mana value, while in practice they're actually cheap or even free to play. Dig Through Time, Treasure Cruise and Temporal Trespass all have Delve, which works very well with Yuriko's triggered ability. Deal 8 or 11 damage and then cast the spells for 1 to 3 mana in this scenario. Then there are pitch cards like Force of Will, Force of Negation, Misdirection and Commandeer, where you literally get to cast the spells for free at the cost of exiling cards from your hand, which shouldn't be a problem with all the build-in card advantage. Here's Guardianship, Deadly Relic, Snuff Out and Submerge are very similar as as there are also functionally free spells under certain conditions. Split cards and aftermath cards like Far Away, Commit to Memory or Rags to Riches also synergize really well with Yuriko as they actually count as having mana value equal to the total of both halves. So if you hit a Rags to Riches with Yuriko's triggered ability, you burn the table for 11 damage. Curtain's Call and Coastal Breach have Undaunted, which is another mechanic that's pretty cool in multiplayer formats as you get a discount based on the number of opponents you have. Have. 
The rate on both of these cards is actually really solid in a four player game. MDFC lands like Seagate Restoration and Agadim's Awakening are also free in the sense that they're lands on the backside and should therefore definitely be a part of your mana base since they actually deal damage off of a Eureka trigger as opposed to just hitting a regular land. The land cyclists from the Lord of the Rings set Lorien Revealed and Troll of Khazad Doom could likewise easily take up a couple slots from your mana base as they're very easy to turn into an actual land in the early game. And while on the topic of cyclers, I want to just mention that a lot of the best ones can be cycled for significantly less than they cost to actually cast, so keep that in mind as well. Now let's talk about the second key element of building around Eureka's triggered ability, which is top deck manipulation. Brainstorm, Preordain and Ponder are some of the best blue cantrips and these are excellent for top deck manipulation and overall card selection. You can also play Jace the Mind Sculptor as a repeatable brainstorm, but keep in mind that Planeswalkers are rather difficult to protect with three opponents. Sensei's Divining Top and Scroll Rack are both commander staples, since they offer solid card selection and a lot of combo potential to every caller in the game. Needless to say, they're both especially good when one of your primary goals is stacking the top of your deck. Vampiric Tutor, Imperial Seal, Mystical Tutor and Scheming Symmetry are all generally really good tutors in EDH, but tutoring to the top of the deck adds some extra points in a Eureka deck specifically. Limdul's Vault, Insidious Dreams and Doomsday are some additional tutors that tutor to the top of the deck. These tutors cost a little more mana than the ones just mentioned, but they come with a lot more card selection and potential combo setup. Mystic Sanctuary and Halima Depths are both lands that offer a little bit of top deck manipulation, so they should definitely be easy to fit into the 99. Polar Citadel, one with the multiverse and future side, provides continual information about what's on top of the deck while also letting you manipulate it by playing the top part of your deck. The Polar Citadel is of course by far the strongest version of this effect, as you're not gonna have to pay any mana for the cards you play. Lastly, I want to talk about Miracles. Devastation Tide and Temporal Mastery are probably the best ones available in this color combination. At first glance, the Miracle mechanic appears to be perfectly tailored for a commander like Yuriko that cares a lot about what's on top of the deck. While that is true, you need to keep in mind that in order to be able to cast one of these spells for its miracle cost, it has to be the first card you drew that turn. That means you can't flip one of these with a Eureka trigger, deal 5 or 7 damage to the table, and then cast it for its miracle cost. So in that sense, miracles don't really fit the criteria of counting as having a high mana value, while also being cheap to cast in practice, since flipping a miracle spell with a Eureka trigger results in a rather expensive card sitting in your hand. However, they are absolutely still strong cards worthy of consideration, especially in a deck that has a lot of ways of manipulating the top of the deck. Tutoring a Temporal Mastery to the top of the deck to get an extra turn for 2 mana is an incredibly powerful line, even though you don't get to also deal 7 damage to the table at the same time. Ramp, card advantage and interaction are all functions that I would normally dedicate a certain number of deck slots to when building EDH decks, however, in the case of Yuriko, I would approach this a little bit different. Let's start with ramp. There are a lot of different ways to ramp in a game of commander, but the goal is always the same. To put yourself in a situation where you have more mana available than you otherwise would have. Because of the way you're incentivized to build your deck with cards that are free to cast or come with a natural discount, you're already in a position where you're quote unquote ahead on mana in a sense. Ramping is also less important in a deck that cares so much about efficiency and doesn't need to be concerned about the commander techs. So I would probably play the best and cheapest mana rocks in the color combination and then just call it a ramp package. You also want to dedicate as many deck slots as possible to ninjutsu enablers, top deck manipulation and cards with a high mana value. When it comes to card advantage, I really don't think you should be concerned about this at all. That's because, as we already touched on a few times throughout this video, Eureka is an amazing card advantage engine by itself, which becomes an even better card advantage engine the more ninjas you can connect with. And a lot of the good ninjas also happen to produce card advantage in various ways. In the case of interaction, I think you're gonna be fine mostly just relying on the package of free removal and counter spells we already covered. Maybe you want to play additional pieces of counter magic, depending on the power level in your playgroup, but for the most part, I think you're gonna end up with a solid suite of interaction just by building your deck around Eureka. 
All right, that wraps up this deck building guide for Eureka, the Tiger's Shadow. Now that you've got a solid foundation for brewing a deck with Eureka and the Command Zone, I'd love to see what you come up with. So if you don't mind, please leave a link with your deck list in the comments and let everyone know what's awesome about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It's an easy and free way of supporting me in my magic content creation endeavors, and it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you kindly for the view, and until next time.